Angie. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing good. The Wedding Pact will be available on Video On Demand on uh, February 4th. What is this movie about? Uh, this is about, about two best friends who make a pact that in 10 years after graduating college, if they're both not married, they marry each other. Oh, you know, I've, I've actually heard of people doing this in real life. Um, I, <laughs> I guess it's sort of a normal it's thing. It's kind of silly. It's, it, the story is about a guy who's cross-country, and he crosses the country to find Elizabeth, and he pretty much madness ensues on the way there. It's a romantic comedy, so it's, it's a lot of fun. It was a good movie to play. It's planned. All right, then it's available on video on demand, like I said, starting February 4th, your cable system, your mm -hmm. uh, satellite provider. Uh, uh, Angie is, this is interesting. I was just reading this about Angie. She actually comes from this area. I guess she grew up in Akron. Uh, I did. And, I, and, and, I grew up in Akron, and I actually, my very first modeling job was in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, we are known as the modeling mecca of the Midwest, of course. Uh, lots of modeling gigs. A lot of pretty girls come out of Ohio. Well, let me ask you, because I'm, I'm reading this, and it says that at the age of 16, you began modeling, and you were discovered by some sort of talent agent who saw you at uh -huh. something. And it says in... I was, I was actually 14. 14 years and old. And I did a... It was a modeling convention that was in Quaker Square in Akron, Ohio. And it, they, it was where girls go and they pay money to have mo to learn how to model and, and have modeling agents look at them. And I was in the fashion show. Mm -hmm. And after the fashion show, an agent from New York came up to me and asked me if I wanted to come to New York. And I was like, yes, yeah, tomorrow. And, and your parents actually let you go. Like a week later, you end up going to New York with this guy or girl or whoever. Uh, I don't know if your parents I, went it, with you or not. It was but. a woman. It was a woman, and they have model departments that they put you in. And they were like, "It's supervised. Don't worry." But when when I got there, the woman took off and was, wasn't there the whole summer. So it was three. It was two sixteen-year-olds and a fourteen-year-old in New York on our own. Angie, that's <laughs> insane. That is insanity. That that. I when mean, I think back about it, and now that I'm a mother, I mean, if my mother had known that, she would have never let me go. You know, she's my mother's very she, she's very strict growing up, and uh, she she would have never let me go. But this woman assured her that there was going to be supervision, and I was going to be taken care of. And and uh, well, people lie. <laughs> did uh, did you always want to be a model? Uh, there's I mean I meet girls all the time. They all want to be models. Did you always want to be a model when you were a kid? You know what? I had never really thought of it. It was my mother that took my picture into the to a modeling agency, and so I, you know, I I just I got really lucky at the very since the very beginning. It's it's. What do you think it is about women? They all want to be models, and to me, that seems like a. I don't know. I love the job that I have. Maybe some people think this job would I love suck, being a model. I got to travel the world. You know, I have seven passports that are filled um, with stamps. So I've seen the world several times over. I speak two languages. I have friends in, in, in faraway places. And, I, and I've, you know, I've made a lot of money doing it. So, you know... I can't complain. <laughs> I mean, it, for, you really look back at that time that you were discovered back then. I mean, your whole, almost like whole life, career, it, really uh, how different everything could have been if you weren't discovered at such a young age. Uh, what would you be oh doing now? Oh, my gosh. Now, I, you, you know, I'd probably still be living in Akron. And, you know, now I'm living in sunny California and, and doing something that I really love. I got really lucky. I, I wouldn't change my life for anything. Angie, you're telling me that you don't want to be here in the polar vortex. It was negative nine when I drove into work today. Oh, you poor thing. It's funny. And I, we're wearing T-shirts over here in California. Are you Now, you say that you you are a mother now. and that you Do you have a, yes. a daughter or a son or both? Or how many kids I do you have? I have a four-year-old little boy named Caden. And you say that you, if, if your parents knew what was going on when you started modeling and that you were kind of left to your own devices there in New York City, uh, you wouldn't, you know, they, they, they would have freaked out. And now you look at things differently as uh, being a mother. Absolutely. Uh, what advice, because I do, we do a calendar every year and we have girls, we, we do a calendar search at a big thing called Rover Fest and we pick 12 girls and you know, we do a whole professional shoot, and these are amateur girls, and uh, 
but they all want to be models. What advice mm-hmm. would you give to these girls? Uh, well, the first advice I give to mothers is to tell their daughters to stay in school. You know, because if you have an education, you can always fall back on that because not everybody's going to get lucky. Right. And, you know, I had something that made me different from everybody. I had the flaming red hair. So I was pretty much, when I was in, in with Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schaefer and all those girls, I was, the only, I was the only redhead. So I had something different. And, uh, and if you're not successful in the modeling business, it's, it's pretty uh, torturous. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, it just seems like a one in a billion shot that you actually make it in that business. And and on top of that, maybe I'm wrong. It just seems like it's filled with creepy perv guys. Uh, you know, I don't. I'm sure at the at what you're doing in professional modeling, I'll bet everyone's probably for the most part very professional. But when you're just some girl, yeah, uh, in, no, they, there's there's something called the casting couch that they have out here, and they have it as models too where, you know, the guys try to get you to take your clothes off to take pictures. You know, but I always stick to my guns, and I never I never fell for that. Angie so. Everhart is on with us. She has a new movie called The Wedding Pact, which will be a video on demand all on, on, on all the cable systems, on all the uh, satellite systems. Her website is AngieEverhart.com. Now, he's reading a list and, of... And, uh, yeah, go you ahead. you can tweet me, if you want to tweet me, at Angie Everhart, because I, like I like to tweet. Uh, do you, I was reading a list of all the uh, people, that, the guys that you've been associated with, dated and whatnot, but I just skimmed through everything. Have you been married? Have you actually gotten married, Angie? I, I did. I got, back in 96, I got married to a guy named Ashley Hamilton. Oh, that's right. I did read that. Yeah. He, I, he's the same guy that married uh, that chick from 902. Yeah. yeah. And they were married for three that. days. <laughs> yeah. Did you marry him before or after he married Shannon Doherty? After. Oh, my God. And wasn't he married to Shannon Doherty for three days or something? I have no idea. Our marriage wasn't that much longer. Yeah, you, you were married to him for three months. What was it about this guy that just, what, is this the kind of guy and you meet him and he has some sort of magnetic personality or something? Or what is it? Yeah, he's pretty much one of the most beautiful human beings on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> that will do it to you, I guess. Uh, look, guys. I guess even my, my eyes, my eyes were my uh, were were my downfall. <laughs> do you meet guys, and because you're a beautiful woman, do they? Is it hard because you don't know if these guys are really interested in you uh, because you're beautiful and you have a bunch of money? I'm assuming too. Uh, is it kind of hard to weed through guys that you don't know if they're really into you or if they're just into you because they they want your fame and money and that kind of stuff. Um, you know what? I've never really had a problem with that. It's, it's, you know, I was, after I got married, I wasn't really into having a serious relationship for a long time. So, um, you know, I kept it pretty simple. I'm in a relationship now. Very serious one, actually. Are you? And I'm very happy. Yeah. How long uh, would you get married again? Absolutely. You would. Uh, you were, I can't think of who was just in the studio with me. Um, uh, but well, Hey, Kevin Costner was here in the studio with us. I don't know if you actually dated him, but you went out to dinner with him at least, but <laughs> I actually did not. If, he, he I actually did. seemed like a really nice guy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's all an act. Maybe celebrities are really good when they're in studio with you, but he seemed like a genuine sort of cool guy to, I'd love to hang out with him sometime yeah. or something, you know? And, um, uh, um, but no, I was going to say someone was in the studio with us and you were engaged to Sylvester Stallone and there was a woman who was either married to him. I can't remember who it was. Dieter, maybe you can remember. She was married to him or maybe she was engaged to him. And I'm, I'm almost positive that she said that he was abusive towards her. Do you remember that Dieter? Yeah, I can't remember. Someone here in the studio with us. Uh, Angie, did you ever experience anything crazy like that? Or was he a nice guy? You know, I hate to talk bad about people, but I think he's awful. <laughs> that woman is awful? Yeah, he's not a fun boyfriend to have. <laughs> oh, he's not a fun boy. What, a temper or whatever? Oh, yeah. You never know what you're going to get when you wake up in the morning. Let me ask you one last question. Uh, and Angie Everhart is going to be in the wedding pact that's available on video on demand February 4th. You were in an episode of The Kardashians, I think a season or two ago. And uh, you go out to you're you're playing golf with Bruce Jenner and uh, and 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 his wife uh, whatever her name is I forget the, uh, the Chris. yeah Chris Kardashian you mm-hmm. know like they spin it off she's all jealous she's spying on you and she's like oh my God look Bruce is enamored with Angie Everhart 
do and I'm just curious, do they set all of that up as a, a plot line in advance? And do they say, listen, Angie, let's let's have you go out to play golf with uh, Bruce and then Chris can get, uh, you know, jealous. I mean, how much of this is really thought out and scripted in advance? Because I know girls who will tell me oh, they they live on this like it's actually really right. happening and 100 percent real how how concocted right. are these storylines in um, these shows well it's not scripted per se but uh yeah i mean we knew what we were doing um they asked me to come out and get, they wanted to give Bruce something to do on the show and he loves to play golf he's a really good golfer and i love to play golf and we've played in a couple tournaments together so i did i went out and played golf with him it was really innocent yeah, and then they then they come up with a whole storyline uh, around that of Chris being jealous yeah. uh, about it. Well, yeah, they do. But uh, you know, it's TV. It's fun, guys. They're they're nice people. Well, Angie, I wish you luck with this uh, with this movie, The Wedding Pact. And this is a funny movie. This is a good movie. It is. It's a it's a romantic comedy about uh, about a couple that is in college together, and they make a pact that ten years after graduating, they're not married, they'll marry each other. Uh, last question. Uh, Howard Stern always talks about how small his penis is. You dated him. Is he lying? Is it is it really as small as he makes it out to be? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Angie, uh, listen, good luck with this movie. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, we'll have you on again sometime. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Angie Everhart.